So, good morning to everybody. I hope you can hear me. You can hear me all. I have no feedback so far, but I hope that everything is up and running. I give you a very warm welcome here at the University of Valencia. I hope that most of you are already here in Valencia and if not you will be very soon okay I see already many yes showing up in the chat thank you very much and uh, very very welcome to the University of Valencia uh, my name is Esteban Sanchez I am the delegate of the for mobility of the principal of the University of Valencia and together with my colleague uh, Sonsole Soñate we will make uh, a presentation with the main points uh, you have to take into account in uh, or during your Erasmus stay here with us at the University of uh, Valencia. It's true that it's a very special year for everybody, not because of the Erasmus, but also, but because of the uh, pandemic of uh, of uh, COVID nineteen. So uh, I wish I will first thank you very much for having um, made the step forward and uh, made the decision of uh, coming to Valencia under the circumstances. I, um, I hope that uh, it will be a nice stay by the end, even though the situation and the environment has slightly changed. That's true, that's true. But it has changed everywhere. And uh, be sure that we will do our best to uh, make your stay as uh, nice and, and, and pleasant and, of course, uh, productive as possible, all of us here at the University of Valencia. Okay, I will start with the uh, presentation. Uh, I, 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 there are three parts in the presentation. The first and the third part will be present by, uh, by me. Uh, and the second part will be done by, uh, with more administrative issues, will be done by, uh, represented by my colleague Sonsoles, uh, because uh, she is the specialist in this, uh, in this area. Okay, I think you already see the presentation. Um, yes. Um, uh, again, thank you very much for coming, for choosing the University of Valencia as your Erasmus uh, um, the Senation and the city of Valencia. I'm sure you will like it. The weather is nice already these days. It's not so hot, so very, <laughs> very, very um, nice weather in these days. Uh, welcome to all. And um, I think you will probably have already made some uh, short investigation of our city and our area. The city of Valencia is a very nice city. It's in the east of Spain. It's, uh, it's the third largest city in, in, in Spain. It has a very nice um, old uh, city, old town in the, in the middle of the city, which I encourage you to visit on your own, especially now that we have nice weather. But also the surroundings are very nice and we have even our own beach on the city. So the, 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 the city of Valencia has a port, but has also a very, very nice and large beach which is not very close to the city uh, to the city center, uh, about three to four kilometers from the city center, but they are very convenient connections to the, uh, to the beach with the uh, tram and the, uh, and buses and so on, even with, of course, and also with the bike. So they are, it's, it's still the city of Valencia, but it's in the outskirts. Uh, as I said, we have a very uh, a city center, a historical city full of monuments, we have also a gastronomic city. I, I really encourage you also to taste the paella, our world-known dish. <laughs> uh, probably you have already tasted, but the real ones are made here. It's not the one you buy in Lidl or Aldi, but you have you should taste the ones here in the restaurants in, in Valencia or with any of your Spanish friends you will make in the new future. Please trace the, re the truth, the real paella. Okay, it's a, as I said, it's an open city to the sea, so you have beaches in the city itself. And uh, you have also festivities. It's true that the festivities are uh, not 100% guaranteed. Last year, 
we had to cancel Fallas in March, unfortunately, <clears throat> mainly because of the people of us, of all, all of us, of the Valencian people, but also, of course, of all the tourists. We hope, we really hope and cross our fingers and keep our fingers crossed that uh, this year we'll be able to uh, celebrate Fallas. Uh, remember that it's in in the in March. It's uh, from the uh, 14th to the 19th of March. Are uh, this great festivities here in, in Valencia? And of course, this applies only for all of those of you who will stay here the whole year, the two semesters. For those who are only staying one semester, you should come back for this for this week to uh, <clears throat> to enjoy the uh, the festivity if it takes place. Of course, it's also a green city with quite a lot of parks, maybe not as many as we would like, but there is a very nice one in the old riverbed. Turia is the main river of Valencia. It's a small river, which is the usual uh, size of rivers here in southern Europe. You cannot compare these rivers with uh, northern Europe rivers, of course, but uh, the river has, diver has been diverted in Valencia and is now flowing in the, out part, in the southern part of the city, the real river, which is of course, a very, very small river. <clears throat> and the old riverbed has been uh, changed into a very nice garden where you can walk, uh, make uh, sports, uh, ride your bike or whatever. And of course, one of our very nice uh, uh, image of the city is the city of arts and science with its really very modern architecture. Please take a bike and make a ride in this very large area and really admire this uh, this thing. There is a small video link I put down there in the presentation, which is a short video about Valencia making some more publicity about all I'm mentioning right now here. Okay. And now, yes, uh, this is the the fun part what I had just mentioned. But you came here not only to have holidays <laughs> and uh, and enjoy your time, which you should do in any case. There is. Uh, free time enough to have uh, to to enjoy our our your environment our place, but you came here to spend a semester and to study with us in our university in the University of Valencia one or two semesters okay, and for right now it has become your university. <clears throat> it was founded our university was founded in 1499. Although it's a very modern university, uh, European university, of course, and offering practically all branches of knowledge. Right now, it's also a European university and it's uh, within the For Them project, if somebody uh, has heard about this. Uh, we have about 40,000 degree students and 8,000 postgraduate uh, students, so undergrad undergraduate and postgraduate. And it's uh, the most internationalized Valencian university. In fact, we are the third Erasmus university in whole uh, Europe. I will, I will give the numbers later on. Having more than 2,700 mobility students last year, not this year, that's true. And uh, with more than 3,500 foreign students overall. Okay, So the real, a lot of people choose our university being also a very large university. <clears throat> As a global university, it's uh, devoted, of course, to teaching, but also to research, knowledge transfer, cultural and scientific production, solidarity and cooperation. So every area of, uh, of this uh, four I've mentioned, which are the main areas which I think all universities are devoted to and uh, are working with, are also uh, explored and developed in our university. <clears throat> In the rankings, I've, I have to mention this, we are the fourth Spanish university in, uh, within the top 300 universities worldwide and the first of the Valencian region. As in Erasmus uh, Mobility, I mentioned this already in the previous slide, we are the third university in Europe in receiving students and the fourth European university in sending students abroad. So really we are in a very good position and that's because we are doing well and of course because Valencia is a very uh, nice city to stay. And from the Spanish Foundation for Science and Technology, this is a, a national uh, ranking, uh, UV is in the top 10 uh, position. Uh, due to its age, we are five, more than 500 years old, but also due to the size with more than 50,000 students, we have three campuses, okay? It's a distributed university because we have been growing through the time and uh, 
the the three campuses are uh, scattered around the city you have blasto ibanez which is close to the city center which covers uh, the uh, the areas of humanities education and health science then you have tarongers which is closer to the beach in a in a more um, modern area of the city or a newer part of the city which covers social sciences and teacher training uh, studies and then you have the campus of Burjasot, which is uh, north uh, west of the city in uh, in another smaller village which is called Burjasot, which is just close to the to valencia about i think it's about seven kilometers of the city center and it covers science and engineering okay in this campus the facilities <clears throat> It's uh, the faculties, okay, you can find the faculties which host the secretaries, the departments, the offices of the professors, and of course also the classrooms. And additional services like reprography, where you can make photocopies or copies, canteens, computer rooms and students associations and other similar uh, facilities. Okay, so the faculties are the main places where you spend your academic life. Okay, usually each faculty or maybe each group of faculties has its own canteens. There is, for example, in Burjasot, we have two canteens uh, for five faculties. But in Blasco Ibanez, you have almost your own canteen for each faculty. Okay, um, some faculties are large enough and they need additional spaces for the teaching and for the lecturing. And so they uh, we have some classroom buildings, so called aularios. Okay, so they're specially buildings special buildings which are only for lecturing you have one close to the faculty for the faculties in blasco ibanez uh, in a parallel street there you it's, it's in walking distance and also in burjasot close to the faculty of pharmacy you have also a, a large building with uh, just uh, lecturing halls and uh, this is uh, yeah you, you will have maybe some classes there but it's all in walk dis in walking distance so you don't have to take any bus or tram to go there Okay, so it's just very close by. Other facilities you can find which belong to the university also in the city of Valencia is the rectorate. Okay, it's the, where the, the principal of the UV lives. Okay, it's not living in the, in the literal sense, but where it, 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 she has her office. Okay, right now it's a, a professor woman, woman professor. And there is also the uh, central administrative services of the university also in this building. Then you have, you have the historical site, uh, the historical building of the University of Valencia, which it's open for the, to the public, so you can visit it uh, any, at, at any time. Okay, it's in the city center, and it's currently used for cultural uh, activities and the main academic ceremonies. By the way, the academic course opening or course start, the start of the academic year, uh, will take place uh, tomorrow, Friday, and by the way, during this academic uh, special day of the opening of the uh, of the year 2020-21, there are no classes. So tomorrow everything is closed. Okay, so tomorrow uh, the university is closed because we are many of us will be there in this in this uh, in this ceremony. Uh, there is also a botanical garden. <coughs> which I think you can enter with your uh, student card for free. Otherwise, the entrance fee is very cheap, a few euros, okay, which is also in the southern part of the historical city. And it's a very nice, as I said, green area of our city, full of peas and a lot of uh, plants, trees. And um, I also suggest you, encourage you to visit it and maybe go there and, and relax if you are at some stage maybe stressed. Okay, a very nice place. And uh, yes, now we would start with the uh, administrative issues and I would uh, introduce, as I said, my colleague Sonsole Sognate. We will talk to you about the welcome sessions in the faculty. Some have already taken place, about faculty meetings, academic coordinators, enrollment and calendars, so some of the steps. Uh, please, by the way, all the questions, you please leave them for the end of the presentation, write them down. Because as we are devoted now on the presentation, we cannot read the uh, the, the questions on, on, on YouTube. Sonsoles, the floor is yours. Please uh, go ahead and. Um... Thank you, thank you. 
Eh, hola a todos, bienvenidos a la Universidad de Valencia. Soy Sonsoles Oñate y soy la técnico encargada de Estudiantes in Coming, tanto si sois Erasmus como de Programa Internacional como Estudiantes SICUE, que también veo muchos en el, en el chat. Como os ha comentado Esteban, eh, tener en cuenta que la sesión está siendo grabada y va a estar disponible para todo el público, eh, por lo que os agradeceríamos eh, que no compartierais datos personales, no es el objetivo de la sesión y que esperéis a, a publicar vuestras preguntas al final de la presentación. Eh, ahora sí, empiezo con las cuestiones administrativas. Eh, que me gustaría comentaros. Eh, como os ha comentado Esteban, eh, voy a hablar principalmente de cinco aspectos, la sesión de bienvenida de hoy y el certificado de llegada, que hablaré ahora mismo a continuación, las reuniones de facultad, que este año la mayoría son online, los coordinadores académicos, temas de matrícula y finalmente calendario. Eh, a ver, respecto al certificado de llegada que todos vosotros necesitáis para poder cobrar vuestra, vuestra beca Erasmus, todos, no, únicamente los Erasmus, eh, lo debéis recibir a partir del lunes que viene, día 14, a vuestro email, a través de un email que os llegará de entreu.v.es. Si queréis ya gestionar los, los correos para que no os lo ponga como spam o si no, vigilar también la carpeta de spam por si acaso os entrara que luego nos escribís. No lo he recibido y, y finalmente puede ser que os lo haya metido en la carpeta de spam. Recibiréis un documento oficial con firma digital con vuestra que certifica vuestra llegada a la Universidad de Valencia a fecha 14 de septiembre que es la fecha de inicio de las clases, independientemente de eh, si uno llega hoy o otro llega el 15, ¿vale? Todos vosotros recibiréis ese certificado, este año va a ser así, y no, la Universidad de Valencia no os va a entregar, como en, en cursos anteriores, un papel eh, con el certificado de llegada, ¿vale? Ya no ni entregamos ni cogemos certificados ni documentación en papel, ¿vale? Si alguno de vosotros no recibe el email a lo largo de la semana que viene o bien eh, tiene un modelo específico de su universidad que necesita que le cumplimentemos, por favor, hacernos llegar ese modelo cumplimentado con, por vosotros, simplemente a falta de firma por nuestra parte, a, como archivo adjunto, a, eh, al email incodox.v.es. Vale. Más cosas. Eh, las facultades pueden, estar, pueden haber organizado sesiones de bienvenida para vosotros. Depende del volumen de estudiantes que tengan este año cada facultad. No todas, han, sabemos que no todas tienen preparado sesiones de bienvenida, pero algunas sí. Nos han comunicado que hoy a las 4 de la tarde la Facultad de Derecho, como veis en pantalla, Filosofía y Ciencias Sociales tendrá eh, la sesión de bienvenida esta tarde, el Derecho Online y Filosofía y Ciencias Sociales eh, presencial. Sabemos también que la reunión de Economía fue ayer y también eh, será publicada la grabación igual que esta nuestra en, en breve en la página web. Y, y bueno, estar atentos para, eh, os recomendamos que asistáis porque allí se os dará información más concreta, académica, de, de asignaturas, de, de matrícula y es interesante que, que asistáis en la medida de lo posible. Eh, a continuación, hablaros de mm, vuestro coordinador académico. Si alguno no sabéis todavía, muchos habéis rellenado el AP Form y ya habéis contactado, habéis enviado vuestro learning agreement con vuestro profesor, a, a vuestro coordinador académico. Si alguno todavía no sabe quién es su coordinador académico, la persona que le debe firmar el learning agreement, eh, aquí tenéis un enlace donde están todos un link 
y ahí tenéis todos los coordinadores por titulación. Os he querido poner en las siguientes diapositivas en detalle, no sé si lo veis bien, pero tenéis ahí los emails y nombre y apellidos por titulación y por facultad de los coordinadores. Como hemos comentado, esta es tanto el vídeo, la grabación de, de esta sesión como el, el PowerPoint eh, se colgará en web. En, en, se colgará tanto el canal YouTube del Servicio de Relaciones Internacionales y Cooperación como eh, la presentación la colgaremos en la página web de, de la Universidad de Valencia, en el apartado de Relaciones Internacionales y seguramente en el apartado Erasmus Studios, Incoming, admitidos. Vale. Y por, entonces, una vez sepáis el nombre y apellidos de vuestro coordinador, podéis buscar a través del directorio, el buscador de personas, el por nombre y apellidos, y ahí os aparece tanto el email como el teléfono del despacho, horas de tutorías, y eh, para solicitar una cita personal con ellos o podéis enviarles al Learning Agreement. Eso ya, como veis. A continuación vamos a hablar de la matrícula. Eh, una vez tenéis firmado vuestro Learning Agreement por vuestro coordinador académico de origen y por, y por el coordinador académico de aquí, es en la facultad donde gestionan la matrícula. Muchos de vosotros, por ejemplo, en Economía, eh, sé que ya estáis matriculados. Eh, en cualquier caso, sí que es importante que sepáis que desde Relaciones Internacionales no intervenimos en, en matrícula. No podemos cambiaros asignaturas ni matricularos. Todas estas consultas deben ser gestionadas a través de la facultad y de vuestros coordinadores. Vale. Eh, hay algunas facultades que tienen eh, un email de contacto para estudiantes internacionales dado el volumen de estudiantes que, que reciben. Entonces, os, aquí en la pantalla podéis ver que el email de contacto de la Secretaría de, de Farmacia, Economía, Derecho, eh, Ciencias Sociales, Medicina, Filología, Filosofía y Psicología. Antes de ir a la secretaría de vuestra facultad, conviene que contactéis por email, porque este año, debido a las circunstancias especiales por el COVID, eh, pueden requerir cita previa y, y ser necesario que escribáis y os indiquen en qué momento debéis acudir para poder ser atendidos. Respecto a las asignaturas, sí que os podemos decir que como mínimo el 50% deben ser del grado en el que habéis sido nominados por vuestra universidad y aceptados para venir aquí. El resto, el otro 50% restante, pueden pertenecer a otras facultades. Eso dependerá de eh, la posibilidad de que os, finalmente os matriculéis en esas otras asignaturas de otros centros, dependerá de la disponibilidad de plazas, ¿vale? Eso ya en, en vuestra secretaría, si es posible, lo solicitarán a los otros centros y mientras sean del mismo, del mismo nivel de estudios no, no tiene por qué haber problema. En la página web de v.es, de la Universidad de Valencia, en el menú Undergraduate Studies, tenéis todos los grados y podéis ir viendo todas las asignaturas y el plan de estudios, por si queréis consultar para haceros el, el Learning Agreement. Vale, en el momento de matrícula en el centro tendréis que pagar un importe pequeño, eh, creo que no llega a 7 euros, que eh, incluye el seguro escolar y la, el carnet de estudiante. Eh, ellos mismos en los centros os indicarán cómo obtener la, el carnet de estudiante que es a través del Banco Santander y también cómo pagar ese recibo, que este año creo que ya está habilitado el pago online. De todas formas, cercioraros con, con vuestra facultad. Bien, y finalmente voy a comentaros eh, 
temas de calendario académico, certificado de estancia, que ahora queda muy lejos, pero, pero también lo necesitaréis antes de volver a, a, vuestro, a vuestro país, y el, el transcript, el, las notas. A ver, este año las clases, como hemos comentado, empiezan el 14 de septiembre, lunes. Mañana, como ha comentado Esteban, es festivo en la universidad, festivo de apertura y está todo cerrado. Entonces, el lunes empiezan las clases y el primer semestre las clases empiezan el 23, las clases terminan el 23 de diciembre. Los exámenes de este primer semestre empiezan el 11 de enero. En líneas generales, el periodo habilitado para exámenes es del 11 al 29 de enero de 2021. Luego, cada uno, dependiendo de las asignaturas en las que esté matriculado, pues ya es mirar sus exámenes, ¿vale? Pero para que tengáis una idea desde ya de, de vacaciones, de, de clases y de, y de exámenes, pues sabéis que eh, del 11 al 29 de enero serán los exámenes de primer semestre. Si alguno suspende o no se presenta, tiene la opción de presentarse en Second Call, que será del 14 de junio al 2 de julio, ¿vale? Y luego eh, el segundo semestre se empieza el 1 de febrero y termina el 21 de mayo. Y los exámenes de segundo semestre son del 25 de mayo al 11 de junio, ¿vale? Lo que os he comentado, primer semestre del 14 de septiembre al 23 de diciembre y exámenes 11 de enero al 29 de enero. La, el, la segunda oportunidad para los que hayan suspendido o no se hayan presentado, 14 de junio al 2 de julio. Vale. Una vez hayáis terminado vuestros exámenes, podréis solicitar el podréis solicitar el certificado de estancia a través de Entreo, os enviaremos un correo con más indicaciones, simplemente que tengáis en cuenta que eh, hay un procedimiento online para que solicitéis el certificado de estancia y os lo podáis descargar. Eh, vale. Respecto a las notas, eh, también recibiréis un email con instrucciones sobre cómo descargar, cómo solicitarlas y cómo descargaros el certificado de notas. Eh, os pedimos que por favor esperéis un mes desde que finalizáis el último examen para aseguraros de que todas las calificaciones están pasadas y lo podéis comprobar previamente. Os recomendamos a través de Secretaría Virtual en ese secvirtual.v.es. El certificado contiene un, un código de verificación para que se pueda comprobar la, la originalidad y validez del documento que podéis remitir vosotros mismos a vuestras universidades de origen y en caso que tengan cualquier duda pueden contactar ellos con nosotros para hacerles llegar el mismo documento por email también. Bien. La oficina central del Servicio de Relaciones Internacionales y Cooperación se encuentra en el Palacio Cervero, que está en la Plaza de Cisneros número 4, es en el Centro Histórico de Valencia, entre la Plaza de la Virgen y las Torres de Serranos. Trabajamos de 9 a 2, en horario de atención al público de 9 a 2, de lunes a viernes, y con cita previa este año. Ahí tenéis el enlace por si... Sí eh, queréis venir a ser atendidos de forma presencial. Y con esto eh, nada más. Luego, si tenéis más preguntas, al final continuamos con, con, las, con las preguntas que tengáis. Y ahora ya doy paso de nuevo a Esteban. Eh, ya está. Gracias. Muchas gracias, Sonsoles. Gracias por la, por la presentación. Thank you very much, uh, Sonsoles. This part has been in Spanish. I will continue in English. Uh, it's not because Sonsoles doesn't speak English, she so speaks perfect English, but uh, it's uh, because we wanted you also to get uh, already used to what uh, you will have to use as a common language in the following uh, weeks and months uh, during your stay here, because uh, 
in the uh, centers and the faculties uh, you won't find so many people speaking uh, english so you should already try your basic spanish um, already anyhow the presentation is in english and uh, we will be more than happy to translate for you what you need or to explain what you didn't uh, understand so uh, let's continue with the university life uh, what uh, you will see in the or what you need to know uh, how the university is uh, running here in Valencia, which is of course very similar to what you are used to. First, uh, to be online, <coughs> you can use EduRoam. It's uh, very convenient that you have EduRoam from your home university uh, because EduRoam gives you access to all the networks of the universities and even other uh, NGOs or open uh, associations uh, for free and gives you internet access with your user and password of your home university. <clears throat> In any case, once you are enrolled at the University of Valencia, you have you will also have a username and password of UV of the University of Valencia uh, to access the email account, and you will be able then also to access a Duroam. Uh, with your uh, University of Valencia account, but you can do it uh, with your um, university account. Remember that when you use your password, it's uh, your email, okay, from the university of your home, or from your home university, okay? So you have to add, uh, as a username, you have to add at and uh, whatever, okay? Uni Heidelberg or whatever, of, of every, uh, from, from where you are coming, okay? <clears throat> Uh, did I forget something? No. Okay. The uh, yeah. Well, the username and password you will get uh, for the university uh, email is also the user and password to all the services of the University of Valencia. And this means not just email and Eduroam, but also the virtual classroom, which we call Aula Virtual, where usually all the uh, stuff, all the videos, all the uh, transcripts of the classes and so on uh, will be uh, uploaded by the uh, by the lecturers, okay, by the professors. <clears throat> so you will have access to all this information with the same user and password of the University of Valencia. You can also follow the University of Valencia and all its uh, news and, and events on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. Also, on uh, we have an, our own multimedia server, which you have there, our own YouTube channel, which, channel, which you are following right now, and even some open course were which you can follow also on the link which are sh is shown here. And we have an app, okay, which we encourage you to download for both Android and Apple. And you can download it and can have easy access to many of these facilities, even to this uh, virtual classroom and also to the email, also via your um, mobile phone, your smartphone, okay? So you don't have to carry your laptop everywhere. In some conditions, you can already do a lot of stuff, a lot of things with the with the smartphone. Uh, other services you can find at the university is, uh, for example, uh, SEDI. Okay, is uh, the University Information and Documentation uh, Center mainly uh, devoted to students, and it can give you information about studies, grants, accommodation, cultural activities, job offers, and much more. Okay, the website is here, is written here. So get in touch with them via the website. In the website, you will find at some corner the contacts information and you will see where they have their office and also phones and email addresses. <clears throat> of course, right now, with the situation we have, and this is everywhere, also probably in your, your home university, you should first start trying to contact them via email and uh, probably you will need to have to have an appointment to uh, to visit them. Okay, otherwise it's uh, limited the number of people and so on, and so you will probably not be allowed to just uh, uh, stroll in. Okay. Uh, you have also a health assistance at the University of Valencia, which provides primary medical assistance in all three campuses. Okay, so it's independently. It does not depend on which campus you are studying. So if you have any small accident in the classroom or if you uh, fell on the, on, the, on, the, on the stairs and you, whatever, uh, you have a, a, um, a sore throat, uh, you can go shortly to there. They have office hours, okay, and it's written there from 9 to 11 and then from 3 to 7.30. 
not always all days uh, they also work right now with appointments if necessary of course if it's urgent there is no appointment needed and again there's also a website which is written here and which we encourage you to have a look on and in any case if you need any help please uh, let them know okay they will be more than happy to help you out for the basic issues it's not a doctor i mean it's a doctor but it's not a uh, usual doctor service um, which you would need but just for a primary uh, accidents or something which happens to you within uh, your lecturing time at the university or in the university <clears throat> oops uh, related to health uh, you know that the European public health system relies on the European health insurance card there is a small picture down here in the trunk and there's the slide and so all European residents having public social security health access in their home country okay can use this card and they should be uh, have health assistance uh, also in Spain in this case in Valencia so you should have brought or you should bring this card with you from your home country okay the european health insurance card <clears throat> which entitles you to use the public health system of uh, valencia of spain okay so you will have the set you would have the same national you would have the same healthcare system as we have here but you the card should be uh, should be a get you should ask for the card in your home country okay um, i hope that you have it uh, with you already there is the web page, the web link I put at the end of the slide provides you with the information about this card. It's in all the countries, uh, in all the languages, in all your home uh, language as well. So you should read it if you don't have it yet. And I know at least from the Spanish uh, version that you could be entitled to get a, a temporary card just by printing out a PDF. So in case you don't have it with you, you will probably be able to get this uh, PDF card otherwise they will send in the meantime they will send it to your home and maybe you should ask your parents to send them to you here to Valencia via the uh, postal mail or regular mail the public health system there is a an, an emergency it's not the general emergency number but there is a number which is the 012 okay and you must provide your address in Valencia then inform you about the closest public assistance center near you so they will provide you the family doctor okay this is the, the the attendance of the family doctor prescriptions if needed medical analysis blood uh, x-ray whatever and prescription for a specialist if you need a specialist okay in case of an emergency please uh, don't call the o12 or don't go to the uh, yeah don't call this the the, the the public system but go directly to the hospital to the emergencies okay if it's very urgent don't wait just go to the hospital to the nearest public hospital there are many uh, are many around you you uh, in Palasco Ibanez close to the faculty of medicine there we have the uh, university uh, hospital uh, which is a public hospital as well of course and there you can go to emergencies in case you would need it okay so uh, uh, please uh, be aware of this and uh, take care uh, learn whether you the um, the public hospital is and learn where your public medical assistance center near uh, to you is in case you would need it um, if you have a private health insurance you should ask your private insurance about the phone numbers doctors and hospitals uh, which cover you and uh, probably they will have an agreement with the private hospitals in spain okay in valencia and probably they will ask you to go to this private uh, hospitals which are different from the public ones so you should ask your own insurance uh, which hospitals uh, or doctors you must uh, visit or call for your uh, for your health needs okay please it's important don't wait until you're ill try to make this information clear now that you are healthy okay once you are ill, we are in a hurry and uh, you will maybe not be in the right um, situation to get to gather all this information. To, so do it now. Okay. In, again, once more, in case of emergency, go to the nearest hospital. Doesn't matter if it's public or, uh, 
or um, private. Okay, if it's an emergency, go to the nearest hospital and you will get uh, medical assistance. Um, a few slides about COVID-19, which is the uh, culprit of our situation right now, this uh, really tiny, tiny virus, but it's affecting all of us. It's a global pandemic, you know it. In Spain, mask is compulsory everywhere. So this is different from other countries, for example, in Germany, where you only have to wear the mask in public transport and in the closed spaces. In Spain, you have to wear the mask also when working in the streets. And so once you go out of your house, once you exit your house, you have to wear your mask, not only in public transport, not only in, uh, in closed spaces, but also on the streets. So please uh, wear your mask everywhere. You can buy them already in the supermarkets if you don't have them with you. I'm pretty sure you will carry your mask with you. So please um, take them. They are not necessary making sports. So if you are running or making sports, it's not necessary to, uh, to wear them. If you can make sports with a mask, it will be safer for you, of course. But it's not, this is not compulsory. <clears throat> Some restrictions apply to public spaces uh, like bars, restaurants, discos. As far as I know, right now, discos are closed in, in, in Valencia due to the uh, second wave or to the new, uh, to the new cases of COVID. Uh, but uh, restaurants and bars, they are, some, uh, they, they are still open, but restricting the access, you have to uh, keep the distance, the personal distance, as I mentioned in my second point, and they have uh, separated the tables, but they are still open. Okay, so try to maintain the personal distance, uh, if possible, up to two meters, if not one and a half meter. And in case you uh, feel some of the symptoms, which you should already know, you can call the toll-free number, which I'm showing in this, uh, in this uh, slide, 900-300-555. All telephone numbers in Spain, starting with 900, are toll-free number. Okay, so uh, if you have a 900, not 902, 901, only 900, okay? Every telephone number starting with 900, 900 is a toll-free number. So this is a toll-free number. Uh, I'm not very sure if they speak uh, fluent English, but probably a basic English. And uh, they will give you information of what to do in case you feel, uh, feel sick and uh, have symptoms similar to uh, what a COVID uh, Ill, Ill person uh, shows up. There is information also on this link from our government, okay, where you can check what to do in case probably the first thing they will ask you to do is to uh, uh, stay in quarantine in your room, in your house, okay, for the time being and see how the, uh, how the illness develops to avoid further spread of the, of the illness. More information like phone numbers and about the quarantine can be found in these other two links as well. They are both in English. This, uh, this, uh, this three web pages are in English, so you don't need any translation. <clears throat> Oops. And uh, within the university, of course, the university has taken as uh, all the measures uh, possible to avoid the spread of COVID uh, within our uh, uh, lecturing halls. Okay, the lectures will be mainly blended. This means uh, with a mixture of online and physical. This depends, of course, how many uh, students can uh, sit in a lecture uh, hall. And uh, if uh, there are too many students, then only a few of them will be allowed and the rest will have to follow the class online. But there will be a rotating system. And I think this is a very similar system which you can find in other universities. Uh, other lectures or activities like practicals or lab, uh, lab practicum uh, will have a physical uh, um, need to be there. So you need to be there, okay, a physical uh, class. And uh, you should ask your international coordinator here in, uh, in Valencia to give you all the details on the different subjects and tell you which are completely online, which are blended, which is the, uh, the main, the main, uh, the, 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 the main basic the basic uh, way of uh, lecturing and if the lab uh, the lab practicums if the practicums are in a physical or you need to be there you have to wear a mask during your classes that's true and you have to follow the signs which you find which you will find on all the doors and uh, corridors and uh, classes okay 
So we hope that we will have a safe first semester and also a second semester and uh, we'll, be avoid, we'll be able to avoid the spread of the virus within our uh, classes. So other practical information, uh, Spanish courses. We have a language center, okay, uh, which provides, so we offer uh, Spanish courses uh, on a very, very uh, convenient, uh, um, in a very convenient prices, okay, very, uh, they start on the 14th of October, most probably, and the registration is from September of October. If you're interested, send an email to the to the address you see here, secretaria at centredidiomas.es. And the cost for Erasmus and international students only, so you have to uh, show that you are Erasmus and international student, is 65 euros. Otherwise, it costs uh, away uh, a lot of more money. So uh, please tell them that you're Erasmus. And it's about 60 hours, four hours per week. Usually, you have the option to do it in the mornings or in the afternoons. So. Uh, there are several options, and uh, this is convenient so that it can be compatible with your with your lectures. There is the website as well for the for a more detailed information. Uh, we have also a, another language service, okay, which offers Valencian language courses for free if you're interested in our local language, which is Valencian. And uh, to encourage the the use of language, they offer also language exchange. Uh, experiences a kind of tandem so you get in touch with uh, another person who talks to you in a different language and you can talk to him in i don't know the language which the other person wants to learn german french finnish uh, english whatever and they have also some self-study centers and conversation groups and they are also official center to the uh, dele examination okay the uh, Diploma de Español como lengua extranjera, so Spanish is a foreign language. Okay, you can get you can get the uh, the diploma if you make the examination with them. So get in touch, have a look on the web page, and get further information about sports. You will probably uh, like sports. We have a few sport grounds around in the different campuses. Okay, uh, the activities are. Uh, you can you can um, play your activities during the term during the semesters there are also sports competitions and the oral enrollment should start on september the 14th and the activities on october the 1st um, as far as i know all the uh, open air activities are already taking place and the closed space activities or the, or the in, indoor activities are probably uh, limited to the to the number of persons which uh, can be able to uh, to to uh, to attend this this activities. You have their um, the uh, the website and please have a look and uh, get all the information you will need. Libraries they will open on the fourteenth of September. You need your student card to access the libraries. Okay, and they, right now they are prepared to have two sessions, so you can stay on the morning session or on the afternoon session. They will close down during the noon to clean up the library again and then open again in the afternoon. So to avoid the spread of the virus, uh, these are the uh, the conditions today for the uh, today. No, this this year, this uh, course 2021 for the uh, for the libraries. <clears throat> Electronics access is also available with your user and password, and you can access many of the books uh, which are available in electronic form. Again, you have the link, the website link down here in the uh, in the slide another very interesting activity is our theater group uh, which is uh, uh, made up only from Erasmus students so it's called Estena Erasmus it's really one of our most uh, interesting and really well-known um, cultural activity based on Erasmus students and it's very very difficult to to join this theater group because many of you want to join but they make a casting so if you're interested if you are in uh, in theater try it and you will have a lot of fun okay they're really a lot of, a lot of fun they visit all the different uh, villages around the city and make this erasmus uh theater in uh, in, the, in the small villages and they also make some uh, travels around uh, spain and sometime around europe okay there you have their web page and please have a look and uh, if you're interested, get information of how you can 
make the cast, which uh, will probably take place now in September, or maybe at the beginning of, of October. We have also a disability uh, section for those who would need. If you have learning difficulties or health conditions that impacts on your study, you can get in touch with them and they will provide you with all additional help you can you can need okay so if you um, are in this case please don't hesitate to contact them with via the email via the phone or, or have a look on their on their web page <clears throat> and uh, you will probably know one of the foremost uh, well-known uh, association which is the Erasmus student network <clears throat> which is formed by former Erasmus students. So students which enjoyed an Erasmus state in the past and they form this Erasmus uh, student network and try to help out you, the Erasmus students, which start right now with information and a lot of things. They are all over Europe in many countries because we have Erasmus students all, all over Europe. Okay, And the idea is to help exchange students that come to our university in this case. So how can they help you? They can give you academic advice. They can help you to integrate in the community. They can provide you help with cultural activities, sports teams tourna and tournaments, trips, social projects. Don't hesitate to contact them, uh, either via the, uh, via the, net, the, the, the link, the, their website, or uh, with the email. Drop them a line and they will be more than happy to help you out. In fact, we rely on them and they help us a lot also at the university. You see them in the picture above there, having cooked a real Valencian paella, I hope. <laughs> For halls of residence, uh, there are two. Um, I'm not sure if you have already uh, accommodation in Valencia. Uh, for accommodation, you have this hall, this two of hall of residence. You can get in touch to them to see if they have rooms available. It's usually not easy, the same as in the rest of Europe, to find a room in the uh, Hall of Residence. <clears throat> the price more or less is found here. Okay, Get in touch with the web page and, and ask them to see if they have rooms available. Maybe you are lucky if you are interested in, in a stay there. But the other options are the student flats. Okay, uh, What you call in Germany the WGs. Uh, flats shared with other students are a big success for sure because you are not alone and you are with others together and you share in uh, Spanish students or also foreign students and you share all kinds of experiences and <laughs> cultural exchange. Uh, you can find a list of flats in the SEDI uh, webpage. Uh, if you go to accommodation, they already have some of them. And there are some specialized agencies, housinganywhere.com and so on, which can help you with the, uh, with the flat hunting here in Valencia. But of course, you can have a look also in internet and newspapers and ads and notice boards in faculties or canteens. Okay. As everywhere, be careful uh, with scams. Okay. This is the same here, the same everywhere. So if the flood is huge, wonderful, impressive, and the price is ridiculous, be aware, it can be a scam, of course. Uh, some cultural differences from Spain, which you may not know. The meal times in Spain are slightly different than in the rest of Europe. I don't know why, but we have breakfast rather late, okay, from 8 to 9. Lunch even later, from 2 to 3 is lunchtime. And dinner also quite late, from 9 to 10 in the evening. Of course, this is not. I mean, everybody. You can you can have you can have breakfast, lunch, and dinner whenever you want, especially in your flat and with your colleagues or yourself. That's true. But this is just uh, an orientation of what you can find in bars and restaurants in Spain. Okay, so don't try to go to a restaurant to have dinner at six o'clock in Valencia because they will be probably still closed, or have lunch in a restaurant in Valencia at noon. Okay, because they probably won't be able to serve you a, a proper meal for lunch at noon at 12 o'clock because they still have nothing cooked yet. Maybe at one you can already order something, but uh, just for your information. Okay, uh, you have the canteens and cafeterias, which, okay, due to COVID, may not 
be open 100%, but will have spacing limitation and distancing. But many of them have terraces and they will put uh, probably um, tables outside and outside it's not so critical and you will can have lunch there. The meals usually are served from Monday to Friday and cost from six to eight. You can have also uh, sandwiches at very competitive prices. Okay, so it's also, of course, <laughs> a good place to meet classmates and make friends. Okay, the Mensa has also has always been a good place. For safety, as I said, Valencia is a safe city. Anyhow, watch out for pickpockets, uh, especially who work in the old town and places where a lot of people is uh, walking around. Okay, just be careful. Okay, get in touch with us if you have any type of problem. Uh, we would try to uh, to assist you if there is any problem. Uh, there is, and I think this number is uh, Europe-wide, a 24 free emergency phone number, which is the number 112. Okay, so calling this number you will get emergency uh, assistance. <clears throat> Uh, for banking, uh, there are three banking, three banks, the Banco Santander, with, which have three offices in the campus, uh, sorry, two, in the campus of Las Cubanes, in the campus of Burjasot. They have very small offices there, but they can arrange everything for you for payment of the enrollment, maybe opening a bank account, uh, maybe having a, a bank card for paying and for uh, uh, and withdrawing money from the uh, cashier, okay, from the ATM. And there are many ATMs all around. Be aware or that you will you may be, you may be charged with uh, commissions, of course. And right now, more and more. But uh, you shouldn't have any problem. Also, even paying with uh, with your phone number, with Apple Pay or uh, or other paying cards with the phone, it's usually possible. Even in the supermarket, you can already pay with the Apple phone. So uh, it shouldn't be any problem. Okay. There are, of course, also offices everywhere in the city probably close to your flat you can see offices from other banks hmm. and i think this is all what i can uh, tell you here you have all the ways you can get in touch with us uh, the first web mail a uh, web address or the first link is the address of not the university of valencia but the international relations office okay uh, there you have it and you have also our general email in case you need any uh, um, assistance and you have also a chatbot we have a new chatbot in our website try to ask it it can help you out probably with the basic stuff and uh, you won't need any other assistance it will be more difficult to get in touch with us you have Facebook you have Twitter and you have Instagram as well three different accounts where you can follow all the news and events which are happening around us and I think this finishes my presentation right now and we can start with the questions. Please uh, ask the questions in writing in the chat and we will answer here talking. Okay, I will talk and Sonsoles will talk and will answer to you the, uh, the questions. Thank you very, very much once more for coming. Thank you very much for choosing the University of Valencia and I hope you have a very, very great time during this month. Eh, sí, preguntan qué hacer cuando han pagado la tasa administrativa de 7 euros. En la secretaría de vuestra facultad os indicarán eh, cómo, cómo comunicarlo, si, si lo debéis re, reenviar por correo, el justificante de pago o, o cómo, cómo hacerlo. Tengo entendido que pueden, en determinados casos, pueden comprobarlo ellos a través de la aplicación de matrícula, pero aseguraros con vuestra secretaría, por favor. Ok, there are other questions. El Ciencias Actividades Físicas del Borno, era una informativa, tendrás que ponerte en contacto con tu coordinador. Sonsoles, ¿sabes si hay reunión informativa de, de café? No me han confirmado nada, entonces que pregunten a su coordinador. Si sí, sí, no estaban en, en la diapositiva, eh, deben contactar con, con su secretaría o con sus coordinadores académicos. Ok. About the chatbot, it shows up in the bottom right. In the bottom right, there will be a blue a kind of blue uh, icon, and this is the chatbot, so you can talk to the chatbot there. 
the next will be there any meeting for the faculty of medicine uh, uh, they should ask the uh, secretary or the email address I, I shown before in the presentation and exteriores medicina at uv.es to ask them. Yeah, if we have not shown the, uh, mm -hmm. the, um, the meetings of the faculties in our presentation, this means that we have not yet received the information. This does not mean that there won't be any, uh, any meeting. So please get in touch with the email you, you see there and um, they will uh, they will tell you when uh, you have to uh, and also check your email frequently uh, your university email because maybe they will write you when the uh, meeting will take place or if it's online or whatever the next yeah. question is puedo asistir a clases sin haber incluidas en el learning agreement eh, deberías preguntar al profesor eh, asist para, para la asistencia entiendo que solo como oyente es la pregunta deberías preguntar al profesor si te lo permite Puedes hablar con tu coordinador, eh, porque depende del aula, lo llena que esté, si hay sitio y más ahora con COVID. O sea que eso deberías consultarlo. ¿eh? That's the link with the law students. Thank you. How, where do you we get exactly? How and where do you get exactly the student card? So, so uh, do you want to I answer this? It is in the Banco Santander uh, of the campus. But uh, you will have instructions from your secretary uh, once you are enrolled. Exactly. So once you are enrolled, usually the bank uh, uh, submits you the, uh, the card. So you should get it from the bank. So once you go to pay the enrollment, uh, you, you should ask them and they will probably make it in place or they will tell you how to proceed. Me han citado por la matrícula el 18 de septiembre. Puedo empezar las clases el 14 de septiembre y tengo que esperar a hacer la matrícula. Yo creo que podrías empezar, ¿no? Son soles si empiezan las clases el 14. Sí, eh, sí. Puedo ir asistiendo a clases. De hecho, normalmente la primera o segunda semana de clases se os permite asistir a distintas clases a, para que defináis en el, el, antes de definir el learning agreement, antes de estar seguros. De todas formas, este año, como bien ha dicho Esteban, por temas de COVID, la asistencia, el número de estudiantes por clase puede, puede estar más controlado. Así que eh, pues te recomiendo que consultes también con tu centro, con tu coordinador. Eh, pero en principio las clases empiezan el 14, que no, de, no debería haber problema. The next question, how can I get NIF to attend some sports courses? You cannot get the NIF. NIF is the fiscal number of, of all Spanish citizens and you are not Spanish citizens, so you won't get it. So you should ask the uh, sports center what to do, because as an Erasmus student, you would probably not need the NIF to attend the sports courses. They will ask you for another number, probably, um, I don't know, the, the, the enrollment number or whatever. So don't worry about the NIF. You don't need the NIF. You won't have it <laughs> unless you have the Spanish nationality. So, uh, uh, he no? will need the, or she will need the student card. I think exactly. it's the only identification that they, they require. So with your student card, it's more than enough. Uh, the next question, can we get ECDS from your Spanish course of Erasmus students? My answer would be no from our part. I mean, the uh, Center of, for Spanish Students stud Studies will provide you probably with a certificate of your students, of your studies, and it has to be your local uh, coordinator in your home country, uh, which uh, has the, uh, the, 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 the task to, know, to tell you if he can change this over to ECTS. I won't think so. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not very sure. So, Solis, can you give further information about this? Not really. In in general, um, if the courses are not in your learning agreement, uh, you you will not be able to get uh, ECTS. But uh, in case they are included in your learning agreement, uh, it is possible. So, uh, just ask your coordinator on your, your faculty. Yes, okay, about the student cards, we have already answered this. 
uh, about the meetings of the faculties. The one, as I told you, which are not shown in the presentation, which Sonsolet hasn't shown, is because we have not yet got the information. So get in touch with the emails of, uh, of the different faculties to ask, and they will tell you if they will have an online meeting or what to do. Okay. Uh, so we can come on Monday to, to all the classes we want, given we uh, register officially, we won't register officially un until the end of the month. Uh, well, uh, the problem is that to attend the classes you have to register because the, uh, the attendance is limited. So that's right now, uh, there is a limitation. So you should ask your coordinator if the uh, class is empty. But of course, you should go to class if you, you will register later on, but you should go to class to avoid any loss of, of lectures. Uh, this was Laurin Taboyo. Uh, Emeline is saying, uh, uh, how do you pay this seven euros fee? You have to go to bank, you would get a receipt and you will have to go to the bank. Uh, usually it's in the bank, but they will tell you, maybe they, you can do it also online and they will inform you and the secretary how to proceed. Filología y traducción lo mismo, estate atenta al correo. Pues de horarios, tenemos que elegir, tomar el grupo T0 siempre, eso ya no lo sé, eso depende de vuestro coordinador y de vuestra titulación, tendríais que hablar con vuestro coordinador de titulación de, 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 de internacional aquí en Valencia y preguntarle si podéis coger otro grupo distinto del T0. The Faculty of Economics was yesterday, so it has already taken place, this is for Nicola Tsek and uh, they will give you more specific information about your own study. So we have, a gen we have given a general view of university and in the uh, particular studies of, of the faculties, you will get more fa specific information of these uh, faculties, uh, especially about the studies, about the degrees, about the subjects, so you will get more, more detailed information. Hasta el día 28. Pues sí, yo te recomendaría que contactaras con tu coordinador en Valencia diciendo que vas a llegar tarde, sobre todo para saber si la pérdida de 14 días de clase, Greta Pavanati, eh, te va a perjudicar luego para evaluarte, etc. Así que sería conveniente que contactaras. A ver, en horario normal o por el COVID serán de forma semipresencial. Las clases, como he dicho, serán semipresenciales, Laura, probablemente. Salvo prácticas que serán presenciales. It's not possible. There is a question from La La La. Is it possible to make from home at least until the corona situation in Spain gets better? This is not possible uh, because it won't be online 100% all the courses. So you will have courses which won't be online. You have to be here. And so if you are not here, then you will have problems later on to uh, pass the exams. So this is the, uh, this is the situation. I, I, I cannot, because we don't know how the corona situation in Spain will evolve. It will get better or it gets worse, unfortunately. So I would really strongly recommend you to come as soon as possible. Otherwise, if you need more detailed information, I would contact the coordinator, your local coordinator in your home country and also your coordinator here in Valencia. And they will tell you more detailed information about each of these courses you intend to uh, you intend to follow. Okay. Next week I have three courses. How do I know if they will take place online or face to face? This depends on the coordinator, uh, Julio. Okay. You have to ask your coordinator here in Valencia, and he will tell you if he knows already. There are a lot of questions still open also for us, for all of us. Okay. Uh, what are the next steps from here? Would we someone contact us about the exams? What was it? Um, I've been lost here. Ah, here it is. Yo también, Esteban. Yo estoy como tú. No sé por el orden. So maybe I can interrupt you. Sorry, um, I wanted to say that uh, I'm Carlos Pamela, I'm the head of the international office, and uh, I was joining a little bit late, but I wanted to say you that you are that all incoming students are very welcome to the University of Valencia. Of course, uh, always welcome. You know that 
World University is one of the most important universities in terms of Erasmus. And we are very proud that you can follow this meeting, this chat that we are organized for you. So uh, you can follow doing your questions um, um, approximately in 10, 15 minutes, we are going to end the session. But there are some questions I I can join in this <laughs> uh, in the chat. So a lot of students are um, asking for the student card. So it's very important um, to enroll at the University of Valencia. This is the first step that you enroll at the University of Valencia at the secret as, uh, at, at the faculty. <clears throat> as soon as you enroll, you uh, the, the faculty provides you your student's car and your ID number to join and up with the password to um, all the facilities that you have. So it's, this is essential that you go to the faculty and enroll. This is the first step that you have to do as soon as you arrive at University of Valencia. There are some questions, for example, the difference between student car and ESN. Of course, ESN is a student's association. This is very different from student car. And the student car is from the University of Valencia. And this student car, uh, uh, it, I think that the cost is seven euros. But at the faculty, uh, our partners, at the, uh, our colleagues at the, at the faculties uh, are going to uh, inform you about all this process, how to obtain, how to get this student card, okay? So Spanish courses, of course, in our language center, there are different levels. Uh, the price of these uh, courses are 65 euros um, for one semester, but there are different levels for beginners and inter intermediate level. Uh, uh, so you can... Um, uh, choose the level that you have. So, and of course, there are other Catalan courses that, that someone uh, has asked. There are uh, Catalan courses uh, that and you can enroll you you um, as you come to Valencia. And the enrollment is for the whole course. You enroll the the. Um, suggest not all, not only for the first semester but also for the second semester okay and um, from now the exams will be um, presential not online okay so it's necessary to to attend the exams okay so this is some questions that i have um, i have seen in the chat so you can follow uh, Stefan or Sonsoles, please. Thank you, Carlos. Yes, I see some others. So for, for the courses, how to uh, apply, and if some courses you don't see them anymore, if you want to register, I think Maria Teresa preguntaba eso, please ask the coordinator of your faculty here in Valencia, because we, the academic details are more, more known in the faculties and in the by the academic uh, coordinators. We don't know them in their international relations offices. Okay, uh, and also for the Taekwondo Club, I think Aka Kanton asks, uh, you should get in touch with the sports uh, with the sports service, and they will give you more information. Send them an email, and they will uh, tell you if it's possible or not, or what you can do. Okay. Um, again, for the access to the virtual for the virtual. Um, Classroom in aula virtual uh, for the password. You need to enroll. Pablo, tienes que estar eh, matriculado hasta que no estés matriculado. No te dan claves. No te dan claves. No te la tiene que dar la coordinadora. Te lo dará el, la secretaría, ¿vale? El usuario y clave para entrar en la aula virtual y en el correo. Somar, uh, asking about the uh, how do they get the link to access the, the welcome session of the faculty of law or or others? Uh, so I am showing in the in the screen the contact email from the different faculties, and you can ask them 
ask them and they will send you the, the link in case they haven't done it before. You will have your in, uh, University of Valencia email account once you are enrolled, not before. So, uh, and as it is, has, it has been said before, uh, they will provide you uh, with the mail account uh, uh, when once you are enrolled. Uh, for example, uh, Irwin is asking about the enrollment in sports activities. So you need to have your student card before. Uh, enrolling at uh, in, in sports so in all case if you have problems you can contact with the sports service in order to know how uh, can you, you you can enroll so the exams will be uh, um, not online okay this is important uh, maybe the situation in the next months uh, is changing we will see but uh, from from now the exams will be uh, not online. Uh, Caroline pregunta acerca de los registros de la ciudad. Sí, si eres estudiante de la Unión Europea, es cierto que debes registrarte si tienes una estancia de más de tres meses en, en la policía. Entonces, puedes ir a la calle Bailén número 29 de Valencia a hacer esa inscripción, si bien tienen nos han informado de que tienen muchos problemas de listas de espera porque por la situación del COVID están dando eh, esas inscripciones con mucho retraso. So, what else? Yes, in principle, you should be able to attend the courses. But again, I think there was a free and equal question. Uh, you should talk to your coordinator because the the uh, the number of students we can who can attend a class are limited. Okay, so uh, uh, please um, have a look if the number of students is uh, is open and you can attend it. But in principle, you should be able to attend the classes. But again, it depends on this. Um, it, Anna Lena, it's very important that you know that you can't pay the fee for enrollment at the University of Valencia if uh, from abroad. Okay, so you you have to come to Valencia to do it. Uh, as we said uh, before, um, you can ask your faculty. Uh, in order to to give um, and to get the um, the student card, but at, but you have to to come here to get it. Okay, so this is very important, and it's not possible to pay online um, the the seven euros uh, for getting the the card. Okay, and. That, at the beginning, for European students, it's not a problem not to get in the um, um, the, the European the the, the, um, the uh, because um, of course you are European citizen, so this is it's you have to do it. But of course, if there are not appointments, if if it's not easy to to get it so it's not a problem but we we try to talk with this police office and now we, they have problems in order to provide you this uh, car okay this europa car so this is the problem from from the nie porque bueno también me preguntáis mucho sobre el nie y ese es el problema que las La comisaría, como digo, de la calle Bailén número 29, pues está teniendo muchos problemas al respecto de poder dar citas. Pero para los ciudadanos de la Unión Europea no tendréis problemas 
en tanto en cuanto estéis en territorio europeo. Uh, we don't know if you need an appointment payment in the bank. That's a good question, but I don't know the answer yet. Um, probably you will have waited in a file and in a line instead of uh, making an appointment as far as I know. But maybe when you enroll and they tell you to pay, they will give you further information of how to pay. Maybe. I don't know. You, you know something about this, uh, some sort of? No. Sorry, I was I was reading other questions. I was not following when you answered. No, for the payment, if you need, if they need appointment for paying in the bank, do you know this? I don't think so. I, I, what I was told from economics faculty today was that they could go, they could pay online, they could pay in a cashier machine, even not only in Bank of Santander but also in other banks, and. Uh, Okay. Therefore, I think the, the appointment is not needed. So you should, you should do it, you should be able to pay in an easy way, not just in the bank. Again, the secretary will tell you. Yes. yes. So I think we have answered most part of the question. I think there is some confusion between the figure of academic coordinator and the secretary. Uh, I must say that they are different uh, people. The academic coordinator is a teacher um, and uh, it is responsible for your uh, any, any academic matter that, uh, that you may have. And the secretary is uh, administrative staff. Uh, like me uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and some of my colleagues here, and uh, uh, the um, secretary will help you with enrollment um, processes, administrative issues, but uh, not questions regarding the the studies, <laughs> your studies, your courses, and and things like that. But. Uh, I will recommend you to, to write to the secretary if you are a student from the faculty shown in the screen because they, they can first help you to solve most of your, your doubts and in case they can't, they will, um, um, they will ask your coordinator or tell you uh, how you can, um, who, uh, can solve your question or, or how to, to get in touch with, with your coordinator easily. I'm afraid there is no discount on the bus uh, metro tickets for students or for the bikes, but you have to ask, okay? You have to ask to be sure. Uh, anyhow, the prices are quite competitive, so they are not, they are cheap for everybody. Uh, maybe you can buy a student card for the for the whole year or something something like this. But if you pay on a day by basis or on a ticket, a uh, simple ticket, you won't get any discount. But please ask. Okay, I think they are not not important. The presentation will be available. It uh, will be available on the web page of International Relations of the University of Valencia. One, it's there, no, uh, Carlos. Yes, yes. So yes. 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 La presentación la colgamos en la página web de Relaciones Internacionales y estará disponible para todos vosotros. Eh, preguntan también acerca de los exámenes. Eh, si tienen que hacer los exámenes en enero, si vas a estudiar los dos semestres. Sí, el curso está dividido en dos semestres y entonces las asignaturas que finalizan en el primer semestre tienen los exámenes en enero y las de segundo semestre a final de en junio. Okay, okay, okay. And then, for example, for the enrollment, Laurine is that for the whole year, not only for the first semester, but, but also for the second one. So um, you have to enroll at the beginning uh, of the course, now in September, uh, for both semester, the first and second one. And in terms of um, username and password again you need to 
to enroll before getting a uh, username and password. So this is essential for you, that you have to go to the faculty and you have to enroll. This is the first step again, okay? This is the more important um, thing that you have to do as soon as you uh, come to Valencia. And in terms of uh, bikes, I think that I don't know if Stefan has told you about that, but there is a, a rent rent a bike uh, system in Valencia is very convenient for you because you pay not more than 70 euros, I think so, uh, for the whole year, and you can use this rent a bike system. So this is very convenient, I think so. There was also a question about uh, the timetables. Uh, we have given the general timetable with which is uh, the holidays and what are the classes, but you will get, of course, your particular uh, timetable with your classes in the faculty, okay, from your coordinator, and you will set up your timetable for your uh, own classes. But this is one you get in touch with your coordinator, and you will get probably more information in the uh, in the uh, session, uh, which is uh, which will take place in your faculty. And if it has already taken place, it will be already, will be already uploaded. It will be probably uploaded, and you can uh, hear or see it again. Okay. So try to. Yes, I don't know the question about German Esclava. We will have a look. Somebody is saying that in Ciencias de la Actividad Física y el Deporte, el coordinador dice que no responde si no recibe un email de la UVE y no están registrados. ¿Qué pueden hacer? Okay, this is a difficult question. I don't know what to answer. Uh, que vayan a la secretaría, ¿no? De la facultad. Yes, go go to the faculty, ir a la secretaría, sí. matricularos y os dirán sí. a ver, en la de matricularos te dan el correo. You will get your Spain get your username and password once you have enrolled. You need to be enrolled in the secretary to get your username and password. Uh, for the exams, once you have enrolled, you have the right to go to the exams. You will be registered to the exams once you have enrolled. In fact, you, if you don't want to make the exam once you have enrolled, once you are enrolled, is you have to uh, communicate that you are not going to make the exam. Otherwise, you have to do the exam. Sí. Pregunta, ¿periodismo tiene recepción? No he recibido ninguna información. Seguramente no haya sesión de bienvenida, no sois muchos, entonces te recomendamos... Como hemos dicho antes, todas las facultades que no aparecían en la presentación con, con sesión de bienvenida probablemente no tengan. Preguntar, por favor, preguntar en secretaría y os informarán en secretaría o a vuestro coordinador. Mirte said, so, I will be registered for classes before you are enrolled. You cannot register for classes before you are enrolled. You cannot do this. And how do we know if we will be in group A or B? Again, if you are not enrolled, you don't know. So contact uh, the, the, the faculty or contact the, co the coordinator and tell him that you cannot go to classes until this happens and um, he should provide you with, uh, with the solution for this because otherwise if you're not enrolled, you don't know. Once you are enrolled, you, you will know. Valenbisi, okay, you have the answer there. If you have your password and username, means that I am enrolled. Yes, it should mean that you are enrolled. You should wait until the 22nd to enroll. You cannot do it earlier, of course. Okay. Yes, you will choose el MLI en las asignaturas para los dos semestres. Por ejemplo, Kevin, disculpa, um, nos pregunta sobre la oficina de visados si está abierta. Eh, tenemos, eh, puedes enviarnos un correo electrónico a visados.v.de si te daremos la información, lo pongo en el chat, ¿vale? Para que puedas enviar todas las dudas que tengas en ese sentido. And of course, there are a lot of stations uh, in this uh, rent of a uh, bike system. There are uh, Valencia is plenty of this um, station of, uh, where you can find a lot of bikes, so no, it's no problem. Yes, Akatong is the same. The academic coordinator and the mobility coordinator should be the same. For you at least. And 
and I don't to just said I don't go to any class until then. Uh, you should try to contact again if you are not enrolled and you have an appointment for the enrollment somewhere uh, by the end of next week or the week afterwards contact your, your academic or your mobility coordinator here in Valencia and ask him if you can already attend classes he will tell you if you can go or not to the car to the classes no podemos asistir a clase depende insisto habla con tu coordinador a ver si os podéis acercar a clase o no eh, igual os da el link para que podáis seguirlas online o no, eso tenéis que hablar con el coordinador, pero eso le pasará a todos. En principio no os deberíais quedar atrás porque además ahora se están grabando las clases, así que igual las podéis ver. Bueno, creo que se estarán grabando las clases y que las podréis ver después. Sí, yo creo que eso es importante, Esteban, que si perdéis una semana de clase, por supuesto que os podéis matricular, por supuesto que si podéis seguir las clases, en ese sentido no os preocupéis. Sí. No, no pasa nada, no os preocupéis. Claro. So, not, I mean, if you, if, you, if you start one week after, it's not that critical. Yeah, it's no problem not attending the classes for the, net, for, for the first week, no problem. El, vuestro horario de clases lo chequearéis cuando os matriculéis el 22. Cuando os, 20, eh, os matriculéis os dirán, tienes estas opciones y entonces elegirás tu horario ese día. Mainara. Mainara. <coughs> That's it, no, Carlos? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So I think that it's uh, half past 12. Uh, so maybe it's time to end the um, uh, this presentation. So I wanted to say um, thanks everybody for attending this uh, session. And again, you are very welcome to the University of Valencia uh, you know that the situation, because of the pandemic, is not easy. But of course, we um, we think that we have to follow this Erasmus program, our international program. So this is essential for us. Uh, the internationalization of our university, of course, our incoming students are. Um, part of our university so of course you are very welcome um, our international office um, um, we are at the in the center of valencia very close to the serranos towers as son Soles said and uh, if you need something of course we we will be very glad to attend you and of course faculties uh, erasmus coordinators and uh, Again, welcome to Valencia. Enjoy your stay in your city. Okay, so thank you so much. Esteban, algo más? <laughs> yeah, no, yes, there were some last questions. Um, to enroll means that you will pay the, uh, that you will pay the, uh, <clears throat> You will pay the uh, the fee, okay? So you have to go to the secretary of the, of your faculty to enroll. Otherwise, you are not enrolled, okay? <clears throat> and uh, um, nothing else. I mean, you will have to check your mail and otherwise get in touch with the uh, with your faculty. You you have the emails in the presentation. Exactly. These are the emails of some of the faculties, and the rest uh, are shown there. So have a look there. Bye.